Hi, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a new product, which is the ASI Air Plus. Uh, essentially, I've got a hold of one of these devices, uh, part of the ASI Experience Officer program, uh, which, uh, yeah, they gave me $100 off and um, yeah purchased this and they provided expedited delivery um, so these devices aren't going to be available really until um, around november time um, but yeah fortunately i've got my hands on this so i can uh, run through uh, the changes to this versus the asi air pro which uh, a lot of people will already have um, and i can talk about see the the differences between that and also the uh, benefits over the pro so let's uh, take a look at the actual device itself. Uh, there it is. Essentially the biggest and most obvious uh, difference between this and the previous uh, device is the external antenna. Um, something to be honest, which I think they should have put on the, on, on the Pro. Um, it's absolutely sort of crying out for it and that's uh, the biggest bugbear I think of a lot of users. Um, effectively you've got the same ports as before. So you've got the DC input, the power switch. Um, there's also a reset button on there as well now. Um, on the side, you've still got the four uh, 12 volt ports in exactly the same sort of configuration that you have with the with the Pro. And also you've got the DSLR input as well. Here you can kind of see the difference in size, but I think in reality, it doesn't really matter how big these things are because they're gonna be attached to your telescope. So it's not really a, a, a massive problem, certainly not from my perspective anyway. Um, and then the, the connection or the ports of the connections, <laughs> the USB ports and the Ethernet. So same configuration again, uh, you've got two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports and an Ethernet port. And then on the back or on the side, sorry, um, you've got a, a, a TF uh, flash card um, port and also you've got a USB 3 port as well to uh, connect and sort of transfer data. Uh, the other thing I noticed that doesn't come with the Plus but came with the Pro, it's a minor thing, um, you've got a, um, an SD card or a micro SD card that came with this device and also it came with a um, USB flash drive as well which I think was 64 gigs. You don't get that with the, uh, the Plus device, um, however yeah, you've got uh, more than enough sort of uh, connectivity options in order to be able to get your uh, files off this device and onto your laptop for processing. Um, always a bit strange that they don't provide a power supply with these devices. I think it would be nice, or at least an option to um, have that thrown in with the, uh, the product, but um, yeah, it's a minor point. Um, and finally, uh, just the dovetail mount attachment. So it can either go on the bottom of the device uh, there, or you can put it on uh, the side as well, exactly the same um, as with the ASI Air Pro. So what we're doing here is just opening up the ASI Air um, app um, and automatically what it does when it connects to the device is it uh, checks that the firmware version is the right version or not. If it's not the right version, uh, it will automatically update the firmware on the device uh, so that you can use the app with the uh, device itself, which uh, this whole process is uh, nice and seamless at the end of the day. You don't need to think about it. It just does it all for you. Once it completes that, it just restarts the ASI Air um, and then you're ready to move on to the next step. Uh, so what you have with these uh, new devices is there's um, online authorization. Um, so you, you basically need to follow the instructions, make sure that you're connected to the internet. Um, I basically had to do this uh, not with my iPad, but with my uh, mobile phone. Um, so you'll see here I connected uh, with my mobile device and then the activation just uh, works straight away. Uh, very quick, um, it saves a, an image to your uh, photos so that you can reactivate the device at a later point if you need to and then you're in. Uh, so the first difference that you'll see is actually uh, within the Wi-Fi settings but it's actually really device settings. Um, you can see the uh, power information of the device um, so you can see the input voltage, the input current, the total power um, and then also when you've got devices turned on from a power perspective you can see the output voltage as well which I think is really important from a a point of view of if you're um, imaging off the grid, you know 
uh, what the input is and, and actually whether any voltage is dropping due to the, uh, the battery depleting. So in the power settings you can name the devices, uh, so telescope, camera, focuser, dew heater, flat panel and various other things, and then also you can see the uh, output voltages there as well. Uh, other changes here are sort of the personalised settings, so you can now change the um, value of the, or the volume of the sound. So you've got the field level, uh, backyard which is quieter and then completely off. Uh, I use backyard now uh, just so that I know that the device is booted up uh, fully. Then you've got the temperature units as well in Fahrenheit and Celsius. Um, the other change to this software, um, most of these changes um, apply to the ASI Air Pro as well. Um, it's really just the power values that are um, only supported by the ASI Air Plus. But also with this version of um, firmware and the app as well, uh, you can go into Wi-Fi settings and you can actually change the password of the, uh, of the device uh, so that it's not the default. Um, yeah, station mode all, all still works the same in terms of being able to um, hook on to your um, your household Wi-Fi so that you can then use the device everywhere within the house. You don't have to be within range of the device itself. Certainly the issue that I used to have with the Pro was the um, Wi-Fi signal wasn't strong enough to get into to my router, which was the other side of my house. Um, so my router's in the front of the house, I'd be out in the back garden and uh, it wouldn't be strong enough to go through uh, a few walls of the house in order to be able to reach it. However, uh, with the external antenna, that's strong enough to actually reach that, so everything's good there. Um, and then you can see uh, just a, a minor change to the icon there from um, what would have been just like a mini uh, SD card icon to the eMMC storage, basically. So that's internal storage. Uh, which the OS is um, running off of, but also you've got 20 gigs worth of free space for your images as well. From, from this device you can control everything, again the same as the Pro, but um, yeah, for any of you who don't know, you can uh, plug in your camera, plug it into the power supply, then you can um, turn on cooling from here and you can specify which temperature you want it to cool to. And then you'll see in the bottom left hand corner here, the resolution of the camera, the gain setting for the camera, the temperature, current temperature of the camera, and then how much the cooler is working to cool that camera. Uh, guiding is, is super easy with this device. Once you've got your guide camera installed and everything is all in focus, as long as you've got the, the focal length uh, set up correctly, set the gain for the, the camera, and then you've got the what are effectively the PhD2 sort of embedded software on the device. Uh, you've got the calibration steps, uh, max declination duration and right ascension, uh, right ascension duration. Um, you can change those settings if you want to. I've left them all at their defaults and I get pretty good guiding without any need to play about with these settings. So that's all good as well. I also have the ability to also restore calibration. I think that's only really useful if you've got a peer and you're never moving your mount. I tend to leave that turned off and just run uh, guiding calibration just before my imaging sessions. Uh, the other thing I like about this as well is uh, the dither settings. Again, getting dithering to work is an absolute doddle with this uh, device. You literally enable dithering, say how many pixels dithering you want, how often you want it to dither using the interval setting, and that's it, it's done. So that eliminates walking noise straight away, and just think that's a brilliant feature. The telescope, you've got uh, kind of two options here that I tend to use, either just EQ mod or EQ mod with uh, Sky Safari, and that gives you the ability of either driving it completely from this app, or you can also drive it from Sky Safari um, and slew to particular targets if you want. However, although I've got it set to Sky Safari, actually I use view objects uh, an awful lot um, and use the either the Tonight's Best or there's a, a ton of other features down here in terms of different objects and different catalogues that you can just literally go to town with. Um, you've also got a nice feature now with um, the graphs in terms of um, the, the altitude graphs for those particular objects from your particular location. A uh, really nice feature to help you choose what you can um, image that particular night. So once the mount's actually connected, um, you can see all of the mount information and mount settings. Um, you can use the phone to uh, synchronize your mount's location as well, which is, which is brilliant. You 
no longer have to go through the either the hand controller or um, anything else trying to work out what your longitude latitude settings are. Um, you've also got sort of whenever you're doing automatic meridian flips, you've got some meridian flip settings here as well. Uh, basically, where you can just tweak the values in terms of um, when it stops uh, tracking, uh, when it stops the mount tracking, and then also uh, when it wants to do the meridian flip, uh, how many minutes after it goes through meridian that you actually do the flip. Um, you can also set um, to recalibrate guiding after um, the meridian flip as well. Uh, I've got that turned off at the moment. I think that's because this is uh, the new device and it hasn't got all of my settings uh, transferred over. I think one feature would have been quite nice. I think if you've got both devices set, um, sorry, both devices plugged in, um, I think it would be nice if you could transfer some of the settings from um, one mount, to, sorry, from one device to the other device, uh, just so that you get that seamless transition of experience. Uh, so with the electronic filter wheel, uh, just literally uh, plug it in, select it, turn it on, and that's it done. Um, I've set up and configured the uh, different filter names to the different filter positions, so everything is super obvious in terms of which filter you want to select at what point in time. Yep, again, that's, uh, that's super easy from that point of view. Uh, don't have an electronic automatic focuser at the moment, but um, that's a device I'm going to be getting uh, getting quite soon. And I think that is pretty much it. It's daylight at the moment. It's still cloudy, so uh, I won't be able to sort of run through anything in terms of um, exactly what this looks like um, at night time. Yeah, however, when I do get the opportunity, I'll, I'll share that experience as well. Uh, one final thing I just wanted to show you in here is actually being able to switch between devices. So I've got an ASI Air Plus and an ASI Air Pro. Uh, both of these are turned on and connected to my Wi-Fi at the moment. All you need to do is just tap on um, the, the device icon. So tap on the device icon at the top. Uh, you get this screen and then you click on or tap on switch device and it will just scan your network to see uh, what those devices are. And you can see here that you've got two different ASI Air devices. Uh, what you could do here, just to make this obvious, because it doesn't provide you the differences, um, is you could change the name of the ASI Air Wi-Fi network to sort of say Plus and Pro or Device 1, Device 2, so that you know which one it is. And then you just literally tap connect and that will switch over to the different device. You'll see instantly it says ASI Air Pro at the top. Actually, that doesn't seem like it's switched over properly. Um, there we go. Um, so it updated the name of the device, but it hadn't actually correctly updated the fact that it can't find the input and the output voltages. Um, but however, that is um, how simple it is to switch between one device to the next. So. Um, yep, yeah, you can do everything all on the same tablet, uh, super easy and super quick. So one thing I should really talk about is um, who are these devices for? I'd say um, if you're a beginner astrophotographer, these devices are absolutely perfect. Um, they've got the benefit of uh, not having to go through all of the hassle of installing drivers onto your, onto your laptop. Uh, remembering things like plugging in the cameras to exactly the same ports as before because there can be some problems with those sorts of things. Um, installing a ton of different software and getting um, used to using those different pieces of software. Uh, they're definitely very, very good, very capable. Things like PHD2 for guiding is just an awesome piece of free software. Um, there's a ton of settings in there that can be particularly daunting, but actually what um, the ASI Air Plus does is simplifies all of that. Um, so I definitely recommend one of these devices uh, for any beginner, beginner to astrophotography. Um, I've been doing this for about a year and um, mainly using um, software like uh, APT and uh, PHD, um, but I bought sort of, uh, I bought the, the Pro device um, probably a couple of months ago and I've been really, really impressed with that. Um, uh, the, the biggest difference and the biggest bugbear was the external antenna or the lack of from the pro perspective and the, the, the plus actually provides me with that. So that's, that's a reason to upgrade. 
If you've already got a Pro at the moment and you're thinking, well, should I upgrade? Does it really provide enough of a difference? I'd say maybe not, but it depends on your situation. If uh, you've already got a workaround for the, the sort of uh, weak Wi-Fi signal, then um, great, just carry on using that. If you don't and um, you feel like you've got to go away and buy sort of new things, then potentially you could look at selling your existing device to somebody who can use it and buying the plus and benefiting from that external antenna. Um, really, really nice that ZWO have um, upgraded the, the other device, um, the Pro as well, uh, to, to benefit from uh, all of the other features and capabilities. Uh, just with that one caveat that you don't get to see the power outputs of your device uh, because they obviously needed uh, extra or different hardware to support that capability. Um, so I would say, yep, yeah, that's a, another reason um, why you might want to get the Plus is if you do a lot of imaging um, off the grid and you're using a either a leisure battery or a lithium uh, battery, something like one of those Jackery devices, then um, yes, this could be helpful as well for you to be sort of warned of um, the power reducing and therefore the voltage dropping. Fundamentally, in summary, if you're new to astrophotography and you want a nice, simple, easy to use setup, go and get one of these devices. If you've already got one of these devices and you're looking to upgrade, I'd say it's a bit more of a difficult decision to actually make. I don't think there's a compelling enough reason to uh, dump your existing device over this particular one. The only reason I've got two is because I've got two imaging rigs now and I just wanted that, that flexibility of being able to use both of those rigs at the same time. So I hope you found this video informative and useful. Please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Thank you for watching.